Well, 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 my friends, it's been two to three weeks, maybe longer, since I glued this all up and cut out these forms for the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. You might be wondering why I call it that, and especially the human part. Well, nowadays you can build them on a machine, you know, so that's the designation, designated difference for one thing. The world's finest uh, mandolin ever built by a human really is my goal. It's not necessarily stating this is that, it's stating this wants to be that. And I certainly hope it turns out really, really good because with a title like that for the videos, it'd really be bad if it turned out uh, to be a really crummy mandolin. We'll see. We're going to do everything in our power to make it as nice as we can. The first thing we got to do is thin these edges down to a uniform thickness. So we'll go over to the uh, router and see what we can do about that. I'm at my router table and I've got a straight cutting bit in here. It's approximately a uh, half inch bit and I'm, I've got it set for the proper depth. I like to leave about 250 thousandths around this outer edge, maybe just a little bit more than that. So I have this set just a hair shallow and we'll uh, Go with that, and you can always take more off. That's my theory. Make sure everything's tightened down. I've already checked this. The bit's real tight, so we should be good to go. I guess I'll get on my uh, breathing and eye protection. And in this dream I came upon a man A man who left no footprints in the sand Dressed on the white we walked a long way For those in need we'd often stop and pray Our journey guided only by the night And yet we walked as if there was a line Then he said walk the straight and narrow every day then he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Well, I almost did a hurry up and screw up. And then I remembered that this is a slightly different thickness than the spruce. So I thought I'd better remark this. And so my little gauge here is what I'm using to mark it with. And now I can check it, check the depth here and see if it's going to work. And I have to get down and look at it underneath the table here to see. And it's pretty close, but it would probably be cutting a little bit deep. So it's easy enough to fix that. I'll just raise it up a little. Tighten it back down, check it again. And that looks pretty darn good. But I like to err on the conservative side, so I'll raise it even a little bit more. And I believe that'll be fine. So now I'm going to do the exact same process here on the back. He said, Find the love of God on Judgment Day. in the master's plan we must learn to lend a hand along the way so we may find the love of god on judgment day then he said walk the straight and narrow every day then he said head straight toward the light and never stray then he said lend a helping hand along the way then he said, well as you can see i'm outside this makes such a mess 
that I decided to just do it outside. It, it's a little bit on the nippy side. It's only about 50 out here and the wind's blowing. I think it's good enough to work in, so here we go. Um, I'm just going to lightly taper all this around. Um, I've got this rasp. It's a, a rotary rasp. This is the medium grit. You can get these off of eBay. I, I, that's what I call it, rotary rasp. I don't really know what, it, what the technical name is or the exact name is. Here we go. Well, these are the kind of things you need to quit while you're ahead, and so I'm going to quit because I don't want to get too deep. I don't think I'm anywhere near too deep, but you just, one little slip and that's all it takes. It's definitely a lot lighter than it was just a few minutes ago. I can tell that. So the rest of that will be carved by hand and we'll get the outside as perfect as we can before we even start on the inside. And while I'm out here and all set up, I might as well carve the back too. And this will be the outside of the back, of course. Cut me His song got under my skin He held me He knew me over again He moved me He knew that he had How can I find words for that? Well, once again, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. You don't want to ruin your one and only great piece of wood. So... I felt like I did that fairly conservatively and uh, there's quite a bit more to come off so I think we're in good shape. Well my friends yet another day has dawned and uh, I haven't been able to get started hand carving this yet but I'm going to do that now. Now in the past I've always used the finger plane like this and you know at the moment that's not hurting too terribly bad but I know if I do it very long it's going to start hurting a lot so I'm going to try this and uh, th this is a palm uh, finger plane if you will it'll go in your palm and you can control it with your fingers also um, I can't get quite as detailed with this I'll, I'll be honest it just doesn't have the same feel but it's good for roughing out and that's what we're doing right now. It's just roughing out. Fortunately, this is really sharp I'm not going to sharpen it right now, but after I get done carving this I will sharpen it before I start on this stuff, which is extremely hard He cut me Just like the north wind He left me With nowhere to begin This is a lot like sanding in that you have to keep it moving. If you stay in one place, you're going to be making a mistake. You want to move all over the place all the time, and that helps you keep it level. Uh, do you know a, a very easy graduation versus digging a ditch? I know that it did. How can I find words for him? a whole lot more video doing this um, I'll just show you at various points and sh show you the progress and if I run into anything that I think you need to know about I'll stop and tell you when it comes to detailing this section up here I just draw in the detail by hand it gives me an idea of where I want to leave that high spot as I go down through 
and I just kind of visually center it. I don't measure it or anything. I just kind of look at it visually and try to center the curve in the middle of that and just move it on down. Then of course, you just have to remove all the wood in that area that doesn't belong. And so kind of like leave your line, but taper it all down, see? It's really not too difficult. You do need to have a little bit of an artist eye when you start carving this kind of fine detail. You will also have to taper from high down to low and of course you're going to lose your line when you do that but by that time you should have a ridge and you just kind of keep your ridge there then. Now I've never put this particular point detail in here before, so I'm going to be a little careful about cutting that down too low. My idea is to put an additional curvature in this, and I'm not just sure how I'll do that yet, but uh, that's what I'm thinking, is to somehow come off of here and uh, put a little bit more of a curved detail in this, something like that. I don't know, maybe a little more curved than that. You know, this will curve and this will be a high point right here is what I'm expecting. We'll see how it turns out. Yes, you could probably do most of this with a chisel too. I just find this to be more accurate and uh, I don't know it's it's also very satisfying to use a finger plane like this if you once you learn how to use it well I'll show you the next bit of progress okay on this scroll up here what I do is I go from the point where I've drawn in here cut back around like this in a semicircle, And I try to get deeper as I go. In other words, this part's deeper than up here. And then you just have to take a little, um, oh, I don't know, either a chisel or a knife or something and get in there and try to work that out. That's not very sharp, unfortunately. So I'll get me a round chisel. Well, here it is, right here. And come in there and try to cut some of that out. When you get right down into that, a lot of times you either just need to use more chisels or I prefer to get in there with my finger plane like this and you can really do detailed, uh, very controlled detail work with the finger plane. But the roughing you just kind of want to do with a chisel or something like that. I'm quiet. It's almost free now outside. I'll get to summer somehow. He moved me. He knew that he had. How can I find words for that? He got me. This is probably the only place on the carving where a smaller one than even than this would be would be handy. This is a 10 millimeter. If I had the 8 millimeter, that would be really nice for these kinds of very tight areas. I've never had an 8 millimeter plane. Um, you don't need it that much, but something like this would be really nice. I
lot of this roughed out fairly close. So I'm going to turn my attention now to some detail up in here and I'm going to use the Dremel tool because it's hard to carve this kind of stuff going against the grain and especially with trying to hold the tools with my hands. I can do this I think okay, we'll see. Well, that's just a rough out right now, and I think it's going to look real nice when I'm done with it. Um, you just never know, and I'm sure the binding will be fun in this area, but uh, we'll make it happen. Well, there's a little bit of additional de detail there. Can you see it? So this caroled around here and I brought this down and curled it around here. I didn't want this to be an orphan. I also made sure that the F hole would clear and it does and it should be just fine. I've got, you know, some cleanup to do yet and some, you know, fine smoothing detail. I just said uh, note to self, when you put more detail in it, it's harder to get it smooth, you know, so it is. But we'll get there, no problem. I can see my line here has pulled in a little bit, so I'm gonna move it over just a little. I need to pull my line like that a little bit. So we'll clean that up right in there. That's looking better, looking down it. A lot of work to do to get it all perfectly smooth. And of course, we're a long way from that anyway because I'll, all I've done so far is rough it out with this. I've got a lot more work to do and to get it all detailed and all that. But I didn't want to get too far along before I put in this detail because I wanted to make sure it was all going to line up and fit and everything. I'll keep moving this back a little bit as I carve it because I just want a little more clearance for the F hole, but that's no problem. As I smooth it and, clip and carve it, it'll move back a little bit. So I'll keep you posted. Well, here we are at morning number three, working on this top. You can see there, it's starting to come around. It's gonna be a little more decorative than your average mandolin. And the Bill Monroe clones out there are hating every inch of this because they like them plain and simple. I guess I just don't, you know, <laughs> that's the difference. But and, pe and people have this thing, and, and I mean, I've seen it many, many, many times. They'll say something like, yeah, it's fancy, but it don't have no sound. And, and they've got this thing built in that says if it's a fancy instrument, it can't sound good. Well, let me tell you something. The sound is going in this before the fancy. Now, yeah, granted, I have to carve this because I'm carving the whole top, but I'm gonna carve this exactly like I carve all the other instruments. And this thing will, I believe, sound really good. In fact, you know, I had five, five tops to choose from, five, five uh, different slabs of wood. And when I compare them all, this one was the one. It's really got a nice tone. It, it was a ping, 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 ping when I was hitting on it before. And now, even without carving the inside, it's already come down. It's boom, 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 boom. You know, it's got a, it's got a much lower tone. Do, 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 do. Purses, ping, 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 ping. It's really come down. I don't know what the note is. I don't care at this point. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see there that this is still pretty rough. So I'm gonna work on cleaning that up. Well, actually the whole thing is rough. And so I'm gonna get the tooth blade in here now and uh, work on doing the detail with the tooth blade because you can kind of carve in any direction and smooth it out and level it. That's what I typically do. Then I'll take the scraper to it if necessary and it will be necessary. 
So I have my little finger plane with the toothed blade, and if you don't know what that means, maybe you can see it there. It has little serrations in the teeth. I don't know if it's going to focus on that or not, but anyway, it does have little serrations. And it leaves little lines, and you would think, well, that's not good. But, but what that does is it allows you to cut in almost any direction. It uh, helps you cut across the bumps and level out things. And yeah, it leaves lines, no question. But that also show, can, tell, it can be helpful because it tells you where you've been and where you haven't been, you know. And so it's kind of nice. But it does, it definitely helps you get rid of the bumps and, and level things out. It takes off a very small amount of wood. You can feel the bumps with your hands and then just kind of go across them at different angles. If you go one direction, you're not helping yourself all that much. You have to kind of go in multiple directions to kind of, um, you know, smooth it all out. I'm not quite sure I've got this low enough yet in this area. Um, I keep carving it down and it may still be a little high. I'm kind of leaving this a little bit. I'm not trying to finish it yet until I get more of the top itself finished. Carving the little sweet spot here and this will be where you could lay your marble in and it'll roll around here in this low spot. I don't make my low spot real low like some guys do. Some guys really make them cup. I don't like that. I think that is actually counterproductive. I think it actually stiffens your top more. I like a subtle bend there, and that's pretty much the way the Lloyd Lore mandolins are. They're not real deep there. see what I'm doing there and I'll keep doing that because it just would take a lot of video time otherwise and I'll show you progress as I make it. Once I get a top carved where I think it's real close then I do a lot of this. I take my thumbs go around it like this, my fingers go around it like this and try to feel any anomalies uh, any high spots, any bumps, anything that's not even. And honestly, it's pretty darn good right now. I'm not 100% sure that I got it thin enough yet. Um, or, you know, like around in the sweet spot here. Um, I kind of think I do, but I think I'm going to work on that just a little bit more. And then we'll be ready to start doing the inside. Another thing you can do by the way is um, take a you know a, a something dark straight edge like that and then you look you know across and see if the uh, you know the angle and everything looks symmetrical uh, underneath there that's the way you can kind of tell it's more symmetrical and whether or not the lines are moving uh, nice instead of bumpy they look real good to me. Looks real nice. So I think it's in very, very good shape. I may just do a little bit more around in the sweet spot here. Uh, not a lot more, just because with this tooth blade, you don't take off much. But I think I will take off a little bit more in the sweet spot. And then we'll move to the inside. I'm reasonably happy with the shape of this after using the toothed blade. So I've gone to my scraper. In a recent shop talk, I mentioned that if you're spending more than five minutes sharpening your tools, you're doing something wrong. I hadn't thought about a scraper. That might be the one exception because of this long curved blade or, you know, and shapers come in different shapes, by the way, these scrapers. 
But anyway, uh, that it does take longer to, than five minutes to sharpen that, and then you gotta burnish the edge over and all that. But on a normal tool, five minutes is about it. But these scrapers are your friend. You really need to learn how to use a scraper when you're, when you're carving an instrument, or really carving anything. You, you can just bring it down to a glass smooth finish without sandpaper. The old timers never used sandpaper on their instruments. They always just scraped them. And quite often I can get there too, but for the most part I typically scrape it really smooth and then I go ahead and sand it also. All right, I've only scraped this back piece, but I don't know if it'll show up in the video at all, but it's really smooth here, and this is still very rough. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm gonna do for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get her all scraped out. I was trying to decide how to smooth out this detail because it's very difficult to get in there and you know like even sandpaper is difficult although I can get it in there with a little stick or something but you know this was too big this scraper this scraper is about right but it just isn't sharp enough in my opinion and it's difficult to sharpen this little thing so I thought, why fight it? And I just went and got a real sharp X-Acto blade, uh, the round one like this, and that works really well. Just getting in here like this and scraping it, it just really does work well. It gives you something to hold on to. It's flexible enough to work, and you can get it in the tightest places, and you can work out the very fine detail with it. So I'm very happy using this. This is working really well. Well, you can see how I'm doing that, and I'll uh, show you the finished product here before too long. Well, there's what she looks like, uh, nearly finished, I'll say. It's not completely finished, but it's pretty far along. Pretty happy with that. The pain in the hand has just gotten so bad I cannot go on, so I'm gonna rest it for a while and maybe come back to it later. We're just about ready to start on the inside, so that'll be the next step. Well, my friends, it will be morning number four to work on this. I'm really only working on this in the mornings, at least for right now. Uh, I've got uh, other projects that I'm doing outside after it warms up a bit. Now, my first impression, you know, you, you work on these things and and it's always good to set them down and come back to it. It still feels a little bit heavy to me, maybe even especially in the carved area up here. I think I probably need to take this down some more. I'm gonna leave the detail, but I need to lower it, uh, you know, to thin it down some. It, otherwise, it feels real nice. Of course, we'll thin it out, but, you know, uh, on the inside, but I'm trying to get it as close to final on the outside as I can before I start on the inside. I almost always have to go back and revisit the outside even after I start the inside, um, but I try to get it as close as I can. And it feels pretty close other than maybe up in here for the most part. So I'm going to take this down some more. It's going to be a little tedious. I'll show you a little bit of that progress as I go along. Well, I started a little bit off camera here by just gliding down through here and actually cutting the height off of the ridge. And then I'll have to peek it back up. Just trying to get a feel if that's better or if I need to go more. I think it's still high, I'll be honest. I think it's still high. I don't wanna make it out of the ordinary. I mean, other than the fact that I've got a little extra de design here, I want the rest of it to be, you know, pretty, pretty standard. That cut it down quite a bit. I think I'll detail that now with the Dremel tool. And maybe before I even do that, I'll redraw my lines to give me a visual.
I think that feels better. It's nice. It's coming down. It may have to come down some more, but I can always go more. I think I'm going to smooth that back out. It's going to take quite a bit of scraping on this, so I'll show you what it looks like when I get her finished cleaned up. Well, there she is. That's about as good as I can get it for right now. Feels about right. It might still be just a tiny bit hefty. Always go lower, though. I'll know more once I get the inside carved and how that feels. So I'll probably leave it right there for right now. So I'm going to turn my attention to the inside now and start figuring out how I want to do that. I'm just going to draw an arbitrary circle around the inside here about, oh, roughly a half inch inside. Something like that. And I'll get my patterns and put them in here. and. Uh, that way I kind of know where all the bracing and things go. So I'll give you some idea of what we got to carve out of there. So I think I'm going to go over to the drill press now and set my depth for drilling depth of holes, um, you know, so that I can uh, easily knock out a lot of this uh, depth and uh, still be thick enough is basically what it amounts to. As I often do, I change my direction. I decided to work on the top a little bit more on the curvature here. I feel like I'm a little too bulbous right in the middle. I want to kind of spread it out a little bit. I just want to make the slope a little more um, subtle rather than coming out and dropping off. I think it's dropping off a little too, too sharply. You, if you keep your tops a little flatter, they have a little more volume, a little, a little flatter sound even. They, you know, instead of having such a high pitch sound. So that's part of the reason I'm doing it. The scraper is very subtle. It takes off such a thin shaving that it's like, it seriously is only a thousandth or two at a time. It's very, very thin. So it takes a lot of scraping. I could go back to my finger plane, but I don't want to destroy my shape. I want to just knock it down a little bit. I sometimes use the uh, Stumac bridges um, as a little bit of a guide too. Often when I'm done carving mine, the, these bridges just sit right there anyway. This one's very close as it is. But I also compare it to my other mandolins that I've built, the ones that I like the sound of. And so I try to carve it pretty close to those. Stradivari was the fellow who learned to not carve them so deep uh, and so tall, or if you will, you know, such a high arch, 
he learned to carve them flatter. Uh, they had much more projection in a large concert hall. So who am I to tell Stradivari he's wrong? That's what I'm doing here is just reducing the arch and uh, flattening it out a little bit. really nice now I think it already feels better I like to let them set a day or two and come back to them and you know it just you just feel things you doesn't feel on a different day I'm lightening the pressure as I scrape it now just trying to get it really smooth that looks pretty good the bridge is a closer fit now too. I don't necessarily use this as a real gauge. It's just it's just a ballpark kind of thing. Having this outside to the final shape as close as you can is a really good thing because once you know once you drill your depth, you can't really change the outside very much. You can change it a little, but you can't change it a lot. Outside, you know, to a very close final shape is very critical. say you need to know when to quit and I've cleaned this top up to the point where I believe I can quit just for the record I don't give out the measurements of my Lloyd Lohr uh, mandolin that I took apart I realize you can get a lot of Lloyd Lohr measurements on the internet but I have not seen the specific measurements that I have it is in within one thousandth of an inch through here to, to the back side of being exactly like the Lloyd Lore, one thousandth of an inch. So that's pretty close. I don't think you can get it much closer than that. Now keep in mind the Lloyd Lore mandolin that I measured had the finish on it. So that's several thousandths of an inch. By the time I sand this down, put the finish back on it, we ought to be just about perfect. I'm calling that good. That's where I need to quit. I don't know that you can hear any real tone out of it yet because it's so thick, but you, you can tell that it wants to make a note. It's got a nice deep mellow tone for as thick as it is. It's going to get really good really fast once we start taking out the inside. Yeah, yeah. 